to the Cooking Cairo. Today in my kitchen, we are going to cook some homemade butternut squash soup. I have been in private practice for over 20 years as a chiropractic physician, but one of the most important missions in my life has been to be a mom for children. And one of my major goals is to feed my family healthy, wise, and comforting foods. My mission for this cooking series is to share my secrets, shortcuts, and healthy creative choices with other busy working parents on the go. Because takeout is not in my vocabulary. My inspiration came from my parents. My mom was a wonderful cook. All my friends expected when they heard that my mom was Italian, that she was short and stirring a pot all day, and she was very glamorous, beautiful always, and still is. And is phenomenal cook, artist, and singer. And then later in retirement, my father is a great cook as well. We always had wonderful meals, fresh food, and always had a great meal on the table. Always had corn-fed beef, natural, organic foods, and I get my inspiration from my wonderful parents. is very particularly interesting and fun to make. You could actually make it spicy or less spicy. There's all different variations, but I'll do my variations. I'm going to start with a butternut squash right here to expedite your cooking experience here and make it a little bit easier. What I've done is I poked it and I put it in the microwave for about seven or eight minutes so it was nice and soft. So that's what we did with our butternut squash. I have some white cannelloni beans. You could use, either use the large ones or the white ones. A little touch of brown ginger, a hot pepper, some apple, carrots, onion, and this is also what a butternut squash looks whole. Obviously, we all know what that looks like. And some vegetable stock. And I like to start with a nice, good vegetable stock. What I'd like to talk about now is just making things a little bit easier around the kitchen um, and talk about a little bit about my favorite kind of pots and pans and things to work with. This is one of my favorite pots and pans to work with. This is a clay pan. What's great about this is that you can cook in it and then you could serve in it. Same thing with this one. And as you can see, I've used it quite a bit. So it makes like a nice presentation when you're serving roasted vegetables or a roast in it. Love this. My next favorite is the cast iron pan. The nice thing about a cast iron pan is that your body actually absorbs a little bit of the iron into the food, which is great for our body and our health. What I'd like to talk about is having the right ingredients in your kitchen. That's very important. So I always make sure I have a lot of onions, red onion, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, pasta, all the basics that you could work with. So you could really whip up a nice dinner for your family, even if you aren't sure exactly what you're going to make. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is peel away the skin. And as we talked about before, we've already microwaved the butternut. That takes a little time to kind of carve it away Try not to carve away too much of the actual vegetable, but you could see by even just the color of the butternut how healthy it is and how great it is for our bodies. Don't forget to core out all of the fibrous tissue inside of the butternut, including the seeds. And also, since we're in the month of December, we still have some pumpkins outside then you could actually use the flesh of a pumpkin as well and mix that in. It has a sweeter flavor, but you could certainly use that as well. Okay, now we're just gonna chop up the butternut. You can still see that it has some texture to it. It could be softer, it could be harder, it doesn't really matter because it's all gonna boil down. And you're gonna cut it into cubes. Some supermarkets actually carry it already cubed before you cook it, which is nice as well. 
some people like to completely puree their soup and others use some of the butternut cubes as part of the texture of the soup. So it's really kind of up to you to do either one. But it really comes out nice in the end and it's so good for you too. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is start with a great ingredient, which also is another one of my favorites to always have in the house, and that's extra virgin olive oil. Note that with extra virgin olive oil, it has almost a greenish tint to it because the olives have only gone through one process of being squeezed. So we're going to put that at the bottom of the pan. And we're going to put in one and a half white onion or red onion, whatever you like, which I already had chopped up. Some carrots, which you could use carrots or you don't have to. For a little sweetness, we cut up a uh, half an apple. A little ginger. I'm gonna let this saute. We wanna have this on a medium amount of heat so that you don't burn your onion, but you just caramelize it because it brings out the sweetness in the onion. It's so tasty. The carrots themselves will take a little bit longer so don't worry if they're still a little hard, but once the onions start to caramelize and get a little bit translucent, you could then add in your butternut and then some water and your vegetable stock. So now we're ready to start adding the rest of our ingredients. And boy, do I wish you guys were here because the smell is decadent. There's nothing better than smelling that simmering olive oil with the onion. It's just fabulous. We're going to put our butternut squash right into the pot. The beautiful, wonderful color, as we talked about, very rich in a lot of vitamins. You could also do this in a crock pot, of course, which is great for the parents on the go who are working and trying to keep up with their schedule. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to cover the vegetables with water, enough water to cover the vegetables, and then even add a little bit more. So probably about six cups of water. The water simmer and boil up, and then we'll add our white beans, cannelloni beans. Cannelloni beans just give it a nice, frothy kind of build up at the end. It actually simmers into the butternut squash and just complements it really nicely. So we're going to let this cook for a little bit until our carrots are nice and soft and our butternut is soft. And then we'll take it in batches and we'll put it through a food processor and completely um, puree it until we're at a real good consistency. While we're waiting for our vegetables to boil and soften up, we're going to put in our vegetable stock. I recommend two tablespoons. And if we need a little bit more salt or seasoning at the end, we could always add that. And we'll just mix that right in. Hi, Mom. What are you cooking this time? Oh, we're making some homemade butternut squash soup. My now, favorite. Do you like it spicy? I love it spicy. Okay, so if you like spicy, this is the trick. After you're done pureeing it and you have it at the right consistency, you throw in one of these nice hot peppers. Ooh, my Don't favorite. Don't cut it up or it'll be maybe a little too spicy for your taste, but it will infuse a nice flavor into the soup. I love getting my family involved in the cooking. It's wonderful. 
because when they have a family someday, they will take on the traditions that I have taught them. Before we puree our soup, we're gonna make sure that we take our hot pepper out. Okay, now that all of the vegetables are softened up, we took the hot pepper out. Now it's time to take batches of our boiled vegetables and puree them. So we're gonna take the cover off, and as you can see, it's coming to a rambling boil. And we're going to take our blender, or you could also use a food processor, whichever you would like to use. And we're gonna take batches. If you like a little consistency, and you wanna keep some of the vegetables chunky, you can also put some aside in a bowl. I like it pureed, I like it chunky, I like it both ways. I think for this demonstration, we're gonna do puree. So we're gonna put this in the blender. Make sure you don't fill it to the top because then you face the risk of it kind of boiling over and it's extremely hot. We've done our first batch and you can see the nice creamy consistency of the soup. And we're going to put that in a separate pot or bowl so that we continue with the process of blending and pureeing our vegetables. Or pepper. Okay, now we're ready to serve. Are you hungry, Douglas? Yep. Would you like a little dollop of sour cream on it? Why not? Why not? So, for a little bit of color, just put a little sour cream. Then and then mix. a little bit of Himalayan pink salt if you need a little bit more seasoning. And black pepper, which I don't think Douglas likes black pepper. So we're not going to put black pepper on his. Ooh. But you could also put pepper flakes if you like it spicy. Just put a couple just for color. This makes it look really pretty too. And this is our finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for listening to our session on how to make butternut squash soup. I hope it helped you and inspired you to try it out. And make sure you stay healthy in every aspect of your health. Get rest, drink water, eat well, and of course, get adjusted.